Hey guys, over the weekend there was a major tournament happening in Fukuoka, Japan. New decks from the Temporal Forces set were being showcased in a major tournament. Over 2600 players playing competitively. And I really want to talk about how Japan does their, does their tournaments. It's basically a best, best of one, 30 minute rounds. And you don't get to tie. You, you, one of you wins and one of you loses. And it depends on how much prizes at time. I think that's amazing. It absolutely removes the idea of stall decks. Uh, mill decks are difficult to perform as well. So you get to see amazing showcasing of real uh, gameplay happening all the time. Nobody's just wasting time. Nobody's just uh, uh, kind of locking you in uh, your active, locking a Pokemon to active. If they do, it's only for a turn or two to kind of get set up. It's not like the game plan, <laughs> which I really love as a Charizard player. But yeah, guys, uh, I digress. We're going to go talk about the top 16 decks. We don't have every single deck, but uh, we still want to talk about these decks. Guys did really well. A lot of them are new, never been seen before, deckless. So we really want to showcase these deck lists and talk about them. So let's jump right in, guys. As you can see, we're missing some of these decks, but that's fine. We'll just jump right into top 16. Looks like it says Lost Zone. Uh, one prize... No, one prizers usually have... Charizard, this one is uh, gonna be focused. I mean, it is basically a one prizer. You start with the with the Cramorant, you tr you start attacking it immediately into Sableye, try to spread damage, and then from there, depending on the position your opponent puts you in, you either go for the Raikou for uh, big big hit KOs, you go for the Iron Hands for two prizers on one prizers, or your Roaring Moon, the Charizard out of the game. Uh, Roaring Moon also really good for ending games. Uh, the nice thing about this deck is you don't have to play any of your two prizers. So the whole game, the opponent is hitting onto one prizers, and then you can finally end games really, really consistently, either with the Iron Hands or with the Roaring Moon, removing a big, big uh, Pokemon, or just uh, knocking out a two prizer out of a one prizer can really lock in those games if you're not ready for them. We do see one Iron Bundle here. Looks like uh, there's a little bit of control over the opponent. Interesting. I just don't believe it's... Uh, it's in, it's good. It's a good card. It moves uh, the field around, but uh, it's just uh, the problem is you don't get to choose what gets switched out, uh, but you do switch out your opponent's uh, active. I'm not sure. Maybe if there's a flutter main, this is good. I guess this is good against a flutter flutter main, is what I'm thinking maybe. But yeah, moving on, guys. We have the three darkness for the Roaring Moon, three water for the Greninja, two psychic for the Sableye, and two lightning for the Iron Hands. Wow. Really solid guys. Uh, four Colrus, two Roxanne, Mirage Gates. Uh, let's see here. We have the Friendship Poffin. What, what this does is brings out two uh, 70 HP Pokemon and you put them in your hand. You, should, you don't even have to play them. You just put them into your hand. Or I think you actually play them on the bench. I'm not sure. I think you put them in your hand actually. And then uh, really, really helpful. It can be played throughout the game. Making Evolution decks really strong. He's running three switches. Uh, well, it, it is it is a lost zone deck. I th actually, you're supposed to run much more. And yeah, there it is. Four switch cards. Um, heavy ball, lost vacuum, contra catcher, prime catcher, new card as well. Switch one of your Pokemon and then switch one of your opponent's Pokemon. Emergency board, basically free retreat. Uh, and then uh, we see a four seal stone, a crisis punch. Crisis punch can steal games still with the Cramorant against the one prizer. And uh, yeah, guys, this deck is pretty solid, really difficult to play against. It looks like it has basically an answer for every single situation. That was number 16, Nobuhiku Shimizu. I think this deck is going to be insane. We're going to see a lot of iron hands in these uh, big uh, big lost zone decks. Iron hands, Roaring Moon is probably going to be a must in these decks. I'm really uh, excited <laughs> and scared. But let's move on, guys. We got number 15 here, Charizard. I'm very interested in this. Four Charmander just went for the four Charmander and added that Charmeleon there. Uh, oh, three. He is running the Pidgeot uh, combo here. He's not running the B Barrels. One Charizard, Rotom, Luminion, Manaphy, and Jirachi. So he doesn't really change his lineup in any way. Only running six energies. And let's see how his uh, trainer lineup. Four, or, four Arvent, three Iona. I think Iona is really good. I think two to three Iona is perfect. I think you do want to run three Iona. The idea is... is uh, you, you consistently start falling behind easily against certain decks like Roaring Moon. So being able to Iono them out of Poké Catchers, Iono them out of uh, certain cards that can help them set up for next turn. And when you 
knock out the Roaring Moon, you can really come back into the game. So it makes sense uh, why you would run a big number of Ionos, especially with another Roxanne as well. So a lot of ways to get out. And you're not running um, Bibero, so it makes sense why you'd run a Roxanne over Ionos. Uh, or at least run one Roxanne because you're not running the barrels. You can't really replenish your hand from a bad Iono on your own turn um, Sometimes it's better to Roxanne makes total sense here But I'm sure if he be barreled he wouldn't even care about Roxanne, Roxanne. Uh, for rare candy uh, Friendship Poffin at four. There is some nest balls here uh, because the Rotoms and the Radiant Charizards uh, I think that's a lot of nest balls three nest balls. That's a lot, but I guess he wants to pull out that Rotom early Contra Catcher at 2, Super Rod at 2, at 6 energy, um, we got Lost Vacuum 1, now there's no path to the peak so you don't really have to run Lost Vacuum, it doesn't really hurt you to run only one Lost Vacuum to be honest, but while path to the peak is existing, it's gonna be hard. This is interesting, this just gives you plus 100 uh, HP, he's actually running the Hero Cape, making his Charizard 430, <laughs> unkillable, <coughs> only thing that can KO it is a Roaring Moon. And uh, it's a really good idea, actually. I really like it. The Divine Band here. Sometimes we fall behind uh, certain decks, like I said earlier. Really good deck, guys. You're still keeping that switch at one for the Radiant Charizard. You can still keep your lineup of uh, Pokemon and just add some uh, Poffins and Nest Balls. Looks like is all he did. Uh, yeah, besides that, the deck is pretty consistent. Reduce the number of Lost Vacuum and uh, sta uh, Stadiums he uses because there's no more path. So you can reduce that number, you just really want to focus on the collapsed. And there's potential for an Artisan as well, Artisan would be a good idea here. Uh, sp uh, but he's not running, uh, you know, B-Barrel. If he was running B-Barrel's Quovet, I would go for the Artisan. But yeah, uh, really interesting idea. It's basically the same deck, still performing really high level. And really happy to see that, guys. Uh, Moving on guys, we don't have Meridon Future Box, but it did perform really well. We're not sure number 13 what deck that was, but we're really excited about number 12 guys, the Great Tusk deck. Uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Four Great Tusk, this is a milk deck. Uh, one Comfe, Radiant Greninja, Mimikyu, and Pidgeot. So it looks like there's a little bit of stall, and what you're doing is you're trying to set up your Great Tusk, stalling out the opponent a little bit so he can play his... Um, <laughs> reduce his deck as much as possible and then you go and mill four cards every single turn you mill four cards I, th I think as long as you have more pri uh, your opponent has more prizes you mill four which is really helpful uh, can maybe three attacks ends games uh, DTE here for fighting energy and two psychic if anybody's interested in the great tusk uh, look at this list guys one hero cape to keep this great tusk a little bit alive you're also I think running uh, yeah, Bravery Charms, exactly. You're running those as well, making this at 190. A little bit harder to KO. Um, Pokegear at 4. There's an Eerie here. Not sure what she does. Uh, Explorer's Guidance as well. I think this guy, what he does is he looks at the top 6 and picks 2 cards, put them in your hand. 2, Poke po two anything, I think, from the top 6. Kind of like a Colrus, just a little bit. Uh, but he discards the rest of the hand. So it's kind of like Colrus, just a little bit weaker. And it's really helpful, actually, in my opinion. One supporter that gives you two cards. I mean, this is a, there's there's a reason to play this over Arvin, honestly. <laughs> if you're consistently finding those cards up on top. Uh, yeah, the Poke Gear at four is insane. Showing you that he takes his time in playing this game. Earthen Vessels at four. Counter Catcher at three. One Heavy Ball. The Emergency Board to Retreat. And only one Ancient Booster. Really interesting deck, guys. Get some inspiration here if you want to play those great Tusk Mills. In this, in the Amer North American meta, I think it works, but in uh, Japanese meta, it's a little bit iffy because you have a timer <laughs> and you might actually throw the game away because you lose if you have less prizes than your opponent. So you have to mill him or you lose game, basically. Giratina, Lost Box decks is going to be number 11 here, guys. Let's look at this one. This one is running all Giratinas, nothing special. Only one RN leaves here, potentially for Charizard matchups. Wow, really cool idea. Four Jet Energy, three Psychic. Still the same amount of energies. Wow. Uh, four Chorus, two Boss, two Aroxan, one Iono. Switch card and no switches? No switches? Wow, only three Switch cards? That's crazy. 
That's crazy that he's ca he's able to play a whole game with only three switches. That's crazy. Uh, two poffins only. Wow, makes sense. You want to go for the nest balls over there because you have guillotine. This is such a good list. I mean, if you want to get some inspiration, this is such a good list. Of course, we're gonna go for the artisan. I think artisan is gonna be huge this meta. Emergency board only at one for the comfy. Okay, makes sense why you'd run less switch cards if you have the com uh, emergency board, bringing out that comfy every single time. Yeah, makes sense. One prime catcher here, a counter catcher as well. So only you, three bosses, three gusting. Not bad. Yeah, really cool deck, guys. Maybe eleventh place by Ryuki. Uh, wow, really interested in your opinions about this Giratina. What do you think about this? Basically, you keep your Giratina deck and it still performs really high level. Absolutely amazing. We do see a, um, we don't know what 10 is, and we see an ancient box here at 9, but we don't know the list exactly, but we do know that there's a Snorlax stall that actually made it to 8th place. This is insane. Oh, I'm so sad about this. Um, I don't even want to talk about this deck, to be honest. Yeah, just know that Snorlax is still a threat. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> Look at the Erica's. No! I can't do this. Discard special energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. Each? Wow. Damn. Wow. That's huge, actually. Each? That's crazy. Man, this deck is gonna be annoying, guys. Temple of Sino. So basically shutting down Lugia completely. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad guys. I can't I can't believe it Dang, okay. Yes, yeah, Norlock stall is still a thing. I think uh, Mencina still hits through the Temple of Sino because it depends on how much energy cards so You're still not being able to completely hold this uh, the Lugias down, but My god, are you performing really well against a lot of decks and and then he gets a Chiyu It's got top two cards of your opponent's deck. Nice just in case you thought uh, you were going to be able to <laughs> just stall the game out. <laughs> He's just going to mill you down. Oh, my God. All right, guys, moving on. We got an Arceus Giratina. Let's talk about this. Basically, Arceus starts the attack, goes into the Giratina, immediately started using Lost Impact to remo uh, remove Lugias <laughs> from the game. And, um, yeah, that's it, really. And then you go to the Arceus again. <laughs> Uh, usually they have another card, yeah, kind of like an Iron Leaves. There's one more attacker here, usually just to steal, like for certain matchups. But yeah, guys, uh, five Grass, four Psychic, four double DTEs, and one Jet Energy. And let's look at this ma maximum belt is what he's using here. Yeah, makes sense because uh, if he's going Mirror Match, well, Mirror Match is not going to do anything. I guess for the Charizard is what this is. With the Giratina, yeah, you're knocking out a Charizard, actually. Yep, that's exactly what that is. Maximum builds for the Charizard matchup. You can knock out a Charizard with this Giratina. He's running two Grabbers, a little bit of control. Capturing Roma at two. And then, yeah, Lost City at one. Very interesting. Let's move on. Another Ar Ar Arceus Giratina. Arceus Giratina is really strong. Uh, it looks like it's just a strong matchup against the... The what do you what you call it? Charizard because Giratina can start attacking turn two, which is huge, <clears throat> and also you get the Arceus V Stars uh, Star Birth, so you get a lot of good abilities. And I can't knock out this Giratina unless I have uh, unless I do a Radiant Charizard with a Choice Belt, I can't knock it out. Iron Leaves here and a Radiant Gardevoir. This one does 20 less damage from Pokemon V. Which uh, is uh, okay, but doesn't shut down my Radiant Charizard still. So I can still KO Giratina V-Star with a Radiant Charizard and uh, a Choice Belt. But yeah, guys, this one is running Bibarel. I think that one was running Bibarel as well. And we are seeing Radiant Gardevoir. So no, not even running any Gar Radiant Greninjas or Radiant Charizards here. Uh, 4 Grass, 4 Psychic, 4 DTE. Very similar to the last uh, list. Very similar to the last list. This is a collapse instead of uh, instead of a uh, lost city, and then TM Devo is a two. Wow. Yeah, this is definitely for the Charizard matchup. Very interesting. Let's move on, guys. 
we are just gonna jump through the lost zone box looks like this is the lost zone one prizer uh but we're not gonna be able to see it but we do have number four charizard let's look at this as well this one is totally different than what you're used to charizard uh four charmander two charmeleons really good uh two, three charizard three bidoof two bever i think you can run two two but looks like he's running three two Radiant Charizard, it's Quovet, Manaphy, and Jirachi, yep. Seven Energies, really good. Collapse and Artisan, makes sense, with no path. A Vitality, TM Devo, and a Prime Catcher. Probably never needed, oh, TM Evo, <laughs> not TM Devo, this is TM Evo. Wow, we could be running TM Evos, guys. Interesting, this is really good, because you can start the game with a Charmander. Become a uh, barrel Charmeleon and uh, that's really 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 helpful especially when you can't find the uh, Ultra Balls. How many uh, trainers? 4 Iono, 3 Arvin. Iono makes total sense guys. Against Roaring Moon you're gonna need to Iono him out of the game. Arvin at 3 in a barrel deck is kind of risky. I'm not gonna lie because you do want an item every turn. You're probably usually looking for an ultra ball or a rare candy every single turn. A little bit risky. And three bosses orders, that's a lot. Let's see how many counter catcher. Only one counter catcher, that's why. Usually you run two two, but three one is makes sense as well. It's four, basically you're ending up at four. Card breakers, guys, what it does is you pick two cards in your deck and put them on the top. Perfect for the Bibero. <clears throat> and then you're also running uh, the Poffin, so you remove the Rotoms and any Vs, because you're running the Poffin. Really strong deck, guys. You are going to use the Prime Catchers, basically. And yeah, really liking this deck. Loving this deck, actually. I think we don't use the Maximum Belt and Charizard. Not yet. I think we just use the, the Choice Belt and Vitality Band, and then we choose Prime Catcher. Yep, that's true. A little bit of control helping because sometimes you <clears throat> you are wanting to run two switches instead of running two switches you run one switch one prime catcher absolutely amazing there feels so good really loving his uh, supporter lineup he's running 10 supporters actually 12 supporters a lot of supporters here um i think 10 is what i need to get to i need to get to 10 somehow uh right now i think i'm running eight but yeah really interesting deck list really Good. I think with the loss of the path to the peak, you really don't need the lost vacuums. You don't need that many stadiums. You are okay with running artisans, especially in a deck that doesn't run any anything else besides no no Vs basically. Uh, being able to pull out your whole deck can help you pull out those pieces like Squavet or an extra Bidu for whatever or Jirachi. And yeah, Team Evil. I'm very interested in the Team Evil <laughs> man. Choose up to two of your bench Pokemon for each of those Pokemon. Search your deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon. Put it onto the Pokemon. So you lose the Charizard in the front. It's basically better than a Mew. It's better than having a Mew. You're guaranteed, instead of a rare candy, you're guaranteed to Evo in one turn. Really, really nice. Really helpful. That's why we're running two Charmeleons. Makes total sense. Yeah, really liking this deck, guys. Really interested in your opinions. Go ahead, let me know. Snorlax stalls at third place. Oh my god, no, no. Snorlax stall got third place over Charizard. Oh my god, I'm so sad. I'm not gonna even talk about the Snorlax stall. I don't want to talk about stall decks. I'm not gonna talk about the stall deck. Wow, I'm so mad. Let's look at this. Arceus Volpex. What an interesting idea here. Alolan Volpex. For free, he does 60 damage. Then what he does is this attack does 70 damage for each of your points. Pokemon V in play. For free again. <laughs> and then this attack does, uh, isn't affected by effects on your points. Pokemon and during your points next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from po Pokemon that have an ability. Wow. So you cannot touch the Vulpix, you can't hit him, you can't hit the Vulpix with the Radiant Charizard, you can't hit the Vulpix with uh, the Charizard itself, you can't hit the Vulpix with... What can you hit the Vulpix with? What? You can't hit him with this. Can't hit him with this. You're gonna have to... Uh, you literally have to... Uh, cologne him. That's the... 
I don't think he can even cologne it. That's crazy. So I can't I can't knock, knock out the Volpix. Nothing in the no man. Charizard cannot knock out Volpix. Wow. That's it. That's his whole deck is Volpix. Doesn't Volpix lose to Arceus? Doesn't Arceus hit Volpix? V Star Power is not an ability, right? But this is yeah, Starbirth is an ability. Wow, so Arceus can't hit Volpix. Only thing I can hit Volpix is Volpix himself. What? This is kind of a stall deck. But it actually beats you up. Oh my god, I'm so mad, guys. What is happening to the meta? Oh my god. Let's look at what else he's running. Four Nest, four Ultra, Lost Vacuum at two. For what? Maybe for Temple of Sinos? Yeah, Temple of Sinos? Yeah, that has to be it. Um, Prime Catcher at 1, Lost City. Wow. 2 Lost City. So that means if he removes the, 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 thing, the only Pokemon you have that can attack Vulpix, that's it, you're stuck. You cannot get over the Vulpix. What you could do is you could uh, boss in the Arceus. Try to take that out. Wow, yeah, wow, we get stuck with this deck. Yeah, very interesting deck, very interesting. And then finally, Luki Archeops actually made it through the whole tournament. Really, really good deck. Sincinos is insane. He does 70 damage for every energy card attached to him. And so he can do a lot of damage. If you have five, for five energies, basically 350 damage. Uh, so you're running a lot of... Uh, Special energies, and let's look at here. Collapse Stadium, a Master Ball is what he's running. Great ball to look for the Archeops. Uh, capturing Aroma for Archeops. Ultra Balls for Archeops. Serena's to draw, because you get to discard the, the card from your hand, makes sense. And then Professors to discard as well, and Iono and Boss, okay. Wow, very straightforward deck, really did really well, performed high level. Cincino doesn't have abilities, so he can hit the Volpex. Snorlax can also attack. And Aluminion, really good decks guys, wow! Wow, wow, the meta is shifting very quickly. We're we're getting rid of the path. So it's opening a lot more decks out and allowing us to play a lot more interesting combinations. But that Vulpix is such an interesting deck. I don't see a lot of decks being able to counter it. The Lugia making it to the top number one. Absolutely amazing. I think that Sincino edition just makes just helps it in so many different ways. It's perfect addition for the Vulpix. It's perfect one prizer, very weak. At 110, though, you could uh, kind of cram it. It's pretty weak, actually. But uh, yeah, there's as a Charizard, you don't have any way to knock out the bench. So you just sit there taking this, these big, big hits from the Cincino. It's very scary, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, guys, interested in your opinions. What do you think about these top decks? What is your favorite deck? What deck are you going to try the most? Are you interested in the Arceus Vulpix? Are you looking to build a Charizard with no Rotoms and an Evo in the deck, uh, Team Evo? <laughs> really interested in your opinions, guys. I really love the Japanese meta, and I want to know what is your favorite deck in this whole video. So leave that comment down below, and make sure you subscribe. Help us reach our goals, guys. Help us grow, and we'll see you soon. Bye.